All right, we're going to talk about how you should structure an argument. We're going to talk about what that means and how you can do it. Well, first of all, I want to apologize if this is kind of a weird view in this video, but I need to be able to show you some of these toolbar features as we are working on a document. So that's the reason why it looks kind of goofy compared to usual. Um, anyway, the, the way I'm going to talk about this is first I'm going to talk about um, on a large scale and a smaller scale how to structure an argument and all of this is geared towards um, this valid reasoning part um, on your grading rubric for your junior project essay so basically let's take a look at this part right here after each claim you need to be able to provide relevant evidence followed by clear and thorough analysis for how the evidence directly proves the claim that it supports and for how each minor claim supports the main claim contained in the thesis statement. Um, that might sound pretty confusing, but again, that's what this video is uh, meant to demystify and break down for you so that it isn't so confusing. So uh, what basically what your job is when you're building an argumentative essay is to build a large argument out of many small supported arguments. Your large argument is whatever claim you made in your thesis statement, right? And in your thesis statement, you gave three reasons why that claim is true. And so basically how you're going to prove that claim is by finding evidence to support each of those reasons. And um, But this is the large structure. So this is what the body of your essay is going to be like. And it is going to echo the structure of your thesis. That's why I've already been alluding to your thesis and how you set that up. So, your essay obviously will start with your introduction, which hopefully you've written at this point. And your introduction will end with your concession, claim, reason, style, thesis statement. Okay? And now you can see that the body of the rest of your um, essay, the body of your essay, is going to follow this format. Concession, claim, reason. Okay? So your first couple paragraphs will be devoted to the concession that you made in your thesis statement. So remember you started um, your thesis by conceding something to your opponent, or at least acknowledging a point that your opponent might make that runs directly in contrast with the claim that you're making in your thesis statement. So you're going to want to spend one or two paragraphs talking about that. And you're even going to provide evidence for that, but I'll get to that in a moment. And then the next three parts are going to be your claim as supported by each reason that you gave. So you'll move from your concession into the first reason you listed in your thesis, from there to the second reason you listed in your thesis, and then from there to the third reason that you listed in your thesis statement, meaning right here. And then finally, of course, your essay will land on a conclusion. And you have probably already written your concluding paragraph. Um, and this has always been my style, and I find students are more successful. When they write their intro and their conclusion first, and then they go back and fill out the body. Um, so that's kind of how we're doing this. Now that's the large structure. Let's look at, on a smaller structure, how to build the arguments. Because as we just said, the large argument gonna, is going to be made up of smaller supported arguments. So how do we support smaller arguments? Well, here's how. Okay, The small structure, I'm going to use this, um, I might say TICA, um, because this is an acronym that I think is easier to remember for students. And if you can remember TICA, and what that means, then you will remember overall how you should build these smaller arguments that construct your larger argument. So this applies to the concession paragraphs and to all of the claim and reason paragraphs. So this is the basic structure. Now some paragraphs will require a little bit extra on top of this, but the basic structure for these arguments are this. You start by naming your topic, okay, which would be like a sub topic, right? Your big topic is whatever um, your claim is about, right? 
but each individual topic is going to rely on what concession are you talking about or what reason are you talking about from your thesis. So you start by listing your topic. Then after each topic, you introduce your quote, which means setting it up, giving whatever information you need to give to your reader for them to understand the quote, which is the evidence, basically. And you also need to name the author of the quote in your quote introduction. And then you are going to give quoted or could be paraphrased evidence, though I want you to practice doing quoted evidence primarily. And each after each time you drop evidence from another source that's not your own head, you have to put a citation. And I will spend some time going over how to do that later on. And then finally, and this is a very important part that students tend to rush through, you have to analyze that evidence that you just gave your reader and argue your point. Connect that evidence back to the point that you're making. So that is the structure, TICA, topic, introduce quote, quote, analyze slash argue, TICA, okay? So all of this sounds good in theory, maybe, or maybe it's very confusing in theory, but what we need to do now is when I say to, not yet, you're going to pause this video, you're going to go get a copy of the concessions paragraph paper which looks like this. Then you're going to get four different highlighters and you need to have one of each color. Yellow, pink, orange, and then you can choose either blue or green. I kind of have um, a smaller amount of each of those colors so either one will work just fine. The next step is you're going to follow along as I instruct you to color code the first paragraph of that concessions paragraphs paper. So you're going to highlight your own so that it matches what I'm doing in the video. And then, based on that example, you're going to color code the second paragraph on that paper to show that you understand how to identify those different parts of that paragraph. So show me that you can identify what the topic is, where the quote introduction is, where the actual quote is, and the analysis of that quote. And then when you're done, you're going to keep this paper and use it to guide you as you write your own essay body. Because even though this is just the concession paragraphs, and I have two paragraphs, and I'll tell you why later on, um, you might only have one. But even though those are the concessions, you're going to use that same structure to write all of your body paragraphs, including the parts where you're proving your own claim. So that is going to be a very helpful document throughout this whole writing process. So go ahead now, and pause this video, and collect those materials. All right, first, before we begin highlighting this paper that you just got, which is titled Concession Paragraphs, I want to show you why it is, for me, paragraphs plural. Why do I have two paragraphs devoted to discussing my opponent's perspective, which is almost a full page of writing. And I'm going to show you why. If you look at my introduction and look at the concession part, which is down here, I highlighted in red, you can see that I named two different points, actually, that my uh, opponent might bring up. People may often make the claim that reading requires time or a capacity for concentration that they simply do not have. So if you pay close attention, that is two different points, even in one small sentence, that people complain they don't have time to read and they don't have the concentration skills required to read. And then you can see even in the concession part of my thesis statement, I hit on both of those points, although reading does require time and practice. So I need to give both of those separate points that my opponent um, supposedly has brought up or would bring up. I need to fully develop both of those ideas before I go on afterward to prove why they're wrong. Okay? But um, we'll talk more about distinguishing claims um, or distinguishing your opponent from your own argument 
and all of that and the importance of the concession later on. Right now we're going to talk specifically just about um, the structuring of an argument, okay? Because we're looking at valid reasoning, which is all about um, you won't have valid reasoning unless you um, structure your argument in the way that it points out here in your grading rubric. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's look at the beginning here. When confronted with the idea that everyone should read fiction often, the average American may feel defensive. After all, people are busy, and reading fiction requires participants to chunk out swaths of time they do not feel they can afford. So I kind of have two different topics here. So the first part I have, when confronted with the idea that everyone should read fiction often, the average American may feel defensive. This is kind of just setting up the fact that this is the beginning of my concession section of my uh, research essay, okay? Because I haven't gotten into a specific reason. But the next sentence, I talk about the specific reason that people give that I'm going to unfold in this paragraph, which is about people being busy and not having enough time. But regardless, both of these sentences would be the T part of the Tika, okay? Both of these sentences um, address a topic that I am then going to unravel um, or support, rather, with um, evidence. So we're going to highlight this part yellow, as you should with your yellow highlighter on your paper to show that this is the topic part. Now I'm going to tell you before I even read it that this next part does a couple different things. For one thing, it kind of just works to set up the evidence that I'm going to drop, which is a quote. It sets it up, and you'll kind of see how I do that. And also, it, tell, it specifically names the source that I'm going to quote, okay? Now, sometimes that's the name of a person that wrote an article, and sometimes you don't have the name of a person available, which is the case here, so you'll see how I handle that says, interestingly enough, generally speaking, Americans have much more free time than they once did, as technology now takes care of many mundane tasks that used to eat up so much time. Washing dishes and washing machines and dryers, excuse me, do the laundry, for example. The illusion of not enough time stems from the fact that this technology also opens up an infinite number of activities with which people can fill their free time. As one staff writer from The Economist notes, and then obviously the next part would be my quoted evidence. So all of this here is working to set up and introduce my quoted evidence. So if we look at our coloring scheme, this part should be pink. So I want you to get your pink highlighter and highlight this part, pink all the way up to the quote. Now let's look at the actual evidence. It's pretty short, and that's an important point. So let's see what it says. As The Economist notes, when there are so many ways to fill up one's time, it is only natural to crave more of it, and pleasures always feel fleeting. So here's my quoted evidence. So this part, if we look at our color scale, is supposed to be orange. So let's color this with our highlighter orange. Now, I had to do quite a bit of setup for this quoted evidence to make sense. If I jumped right from the idea that people don't feel they can spare their time to how people feel their time, fill their time, um, it wouldn't make much sense. I had to explain some things that I learned in the course of this article that I read, which is that we actually have a lot more free time than we think we do, but um, having, we feel like we don't have enough time because there's so many different things we could do with that time. So I had to do quite a bit of setup. The amount of setup required by your evidence is something that you're going to have to decide and pay attention to. Just always remember to keep your reader in mind. Your reader has not read the whole article that you're quoting from, so you need to tell them everything that you think they need to know
for this quote to make sense and to connect it to the idea that you set up in the topic part of your argument. And now we need to set about analyzing that evidence and arguing the point that we're trying to make based on that evidence. So that's going to be obviously the rest of this paragraph. So let's see what it says. People have learned to feel, feel anxiety about leisure time and very often this anxiety leads to the illusion that there is less leisure time than there actually is. So th that part is basically where I am restating what, I, what was already said in the quote. So kind of explaining what's quoted in other words to make sure that my reader understands it. And then the next part is where I'm going to connect it back to my argument, okay? Because many people have associated reading with work in their minds, they get the sense that it could not possibly be a worthwhile leisure activity. Many revert to playing games on their cell phone or binge watching a TV show on Netflix. So the article that I read and that I quoted from is all about people's free time and how they feel about that. The article I read says nothing about reading fiction, but I have to tie it back, and that's what I'm doing here, to reading because that's what my whole essay is about. So I have to set about connecting those ideas together. But regardless, the last part of this um, paragraph is, if we look back here, is where I'm analyzing the evidence and arguing my point. So that's going to be blue. So get your blue highlighter and color that part blue. Of course, it's very hard for, to read mine now because that blue is so dark. But you can see where the different dividing lines are here. So what I want you to do now is read and study this second paragraph, okay, which is all about concentration and the argument that people make that they don't have the concentration skills to read fiction. And I want you to divvy this up with your highlighters so that it matches this slide. If you need to reference this slide, you can keep this video paused right here so that you can look at it. Otherwise, I will, of course, in the playlist, attach this slideshow so that you can reference it and see what the different colors are supposed to represent. And I would encourage you maybe to write on this document, maybe in the margin up here, um, what the colors mean. So yellow is T for the T part of the Tika for topic sentence, and then go through what the pink means, what the orange means, and what the blue means. And then this becomes a really great document for you to keep looking back at as you're writing to make sure that you're hitting on all of those areas.